everyone and welcome to St Hilda's weekly worship for the sixth Sunday after Trinity. Not from the rectory as you can see this morning, Verity is taking a well-deserved break from leading our online services so I'm afraid you're stuck with me for the next half hour or so. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Our gospel reading today is another parable from Matthew. The parable of the wheat and the tares, where Jesus is telling his disciples a story about how good and evil must exist together in the world, but in the end God will sort everything out. Our first hymn this morning is a rather odd one for this time of year. You might think of it as a harvest hymn, but it picks up the theme of our gospel reading. So please do join in at home as we sing together Come ye thankful people come. As always in our worship, we light a candle to symbolise the presence of Jesus with us as we pray together. And with the candle this morning, I have my little angel um, who came to us from the Lake District and St Hilda, who came to us from the sisters who live at Sneeton Castle at Whitby. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light no darkness can quench. If you can remember the words, please do join in with the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you 
and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And our confession. God be gracious to us and bless us, and make your face shine upon us. Lord have mercy. May your ways be known on the earth, your saving power among the nations. Christ have mercy. You, Lord, have made known your salvation and reveal your justice in the sight of the nations. Lord, have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image, to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Collect for the Sixth Sunday after Trinity. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as pass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love toward you, that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today's reading is from Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 to 30 and 36 to 43. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field, but while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds amongst the wheat and went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them up? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest, and at the harvest time I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first, and bind them in bundles to be burned. But gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples followed him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers. And they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. This is the word of the Lord. The photograph you've just seen was taken by me very early on Easter morning last year. It's a bit of a tradition for the people from the different churches across the town to meet near the Yuff Battery for a sunrise service each Easter, usually just before six in the morning, to share in a short time of prayer to worship the risen Christ. As you can see from the photograph, the skies were very clear last year, which made for a wonderful sunrise and a fitting start to the Easter season. The sun is obviously very important to all life on earth, and without it, life as we know it simply would not exist. 
as well as providing the planet with heat, it provides light. Not every day on the headland is like last year's Easter morning, unfortunately, and for much of the time the sun is hidden behind the clouds. But that's not the case in the Middle East, either today or at the time of Jesus, when the sun seems to be just that bit brighter and that bit hotter. So when Jesus talks in today's Gospel about the righteous shining like the sun in the kingdom of their father, it's that hot and dazzling type of sunshine that he's talking about. All the things we see in the world, we see through the light of the sun. We see different colours because, if you remember experimenting with prisms at school, white light is made up of the different colours of the spectrum. And things absorb some of those colours and reflect others. And our eyes pick up on those reflected colours and that is what we see. Plants appear green to us because they reflect light in the green part of the spectrum. The parable in the Gospel today talks about plants again. This time the difference between the weeds and the good seed. Between those whose lot it is to spread evil and those whose calling it is to follow the way of righteousness. If we want to be in the second group, then what should our lives be about if we are to avoid falling into the temptations of being in the first? I would suggest that what we need to be is reflectors ourselves, mirrors if you like. In the same way that people see plants as green because they reflect the green light from the sun, people will only see what God is like when his light is reflected through us. Lots of people have a hard time believing in God. They see suffering and evil. They see the world choked with weeds and dismiss that God can exist because that is what they see reflected back at them. But if those who believe in God can show what fruit the good seed can produce, love, mercy, justice, compassion in practical ways, then what we can reflect back is the alternative, a kingdom, a growing and thriving community where Jesus is Lord and all are welcome. But we're all different, with different skills, different interests, abilities and networks. We can't all be the same and God doesn't want us to all be the same. Think of it like this. We are all a different colour of God's light. Each of us will hold on to some of that light but reflect a different part of it back. The gifts of the Spirit, as St Paul calls it. Your gift is your special colour and in the spectrum of God's love it is equally as dazzling, equally as beautiful as all the others. And just in case you were wondering, my special colour is probably purple. So this week, as you head out with your masks ready, may you shine with the glory of God in your own way. And I pray that others will see the colour of your faith and know that that bit of light that you are reflecting back truly has the power to change their life. Thanks be to God for the life and ministry of the Reverend Pat Webster who, I have no doubt, is one of the brightest lights shining in her Father's kingdom. Amen. Creator God, we pray for your world and ask you to forgive us when we fail to appreciate the wonder of your creation and the endless cycle of nature. In this morning's Gospel, we heard of Jesus' familiarity with the farming methods of his time. We pray for the farmers of today that they may be treated with fairness for their labours. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for the very many people who, throughout the world, have contracted coronavirus especially in those countries where, at the best of times, life is precarious. And we give thanks for those who have recovered. Bring comfort to those grieving loved ones who have died, and peace to those worried, fearful and uncertain as the virus continues to spread. 
We also pray for governments and authorities who are developing strategies to contain and deal with the virus. And for those in health services who may be risking their own lives to care for sick patients. Help us all to be responsible in the things that we do in our lives. To prevent the spread of the virus by taking heed of the recommended precautions and avoiding situations which may make things worse. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, give us ears to hear and minds to understand the message of immortality which you have given us, so that we may look forward with patience and confidence to that time when we will join you in the peace of eternity. In particular, we pray for the families of Ian Smith and Cliff Bradley, a regular visitor to St Hilda's, whose funerals took place here recently. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. This morning, we renew the thanks and praise which were expressed here on Friday for the life and ministry of Pat Webster. On a personal note, I well remember when, between 1996 and 1997, St Hilda's was without a priest, often bringing her here to celebrate Holy Communion on a Sunday morning at 8.30. On one such journey, when the clocks changed, I learnt from her the saying, spring forward, fall back, which I have never forgotten. Our thoughts and prayers are very much with her husband David, who has helped St Hilda's so greatly in the past. Verity and all the members of his family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, a blessing used by the recently appointed Archbishop of York, Stephen Cottrell, when he took up office on July the 9th. May the love of our good and generous God guide and protect us. May the hope of the Gospel sustain us and bring us joy. When we are lost or lonely, when the road ahead seems hard, or when the darkness gathers, may the light and peace of Christ be ours. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We continue with our pattern of opening the church for private prayer on Sunday afternoons. So the church will be open from two o'clock. If you are planning to go along, please do continue to follow the guidelines. We are aiming to restore some pattern of public worship from the middle of August, but we will tell you more about that a bit, little bit nearer to the time in case the guidance changes between then and now. I'm afraid I don't have a list of any anniversaries or any birthdays, but if you are celebrating this week, I hope you have an enjoyable day as much as you can. And don't forget, if you're out and about this week, to take your mask with you. I'd like to thank those who've helped in putting together today's service, to Ian for his wonderful playing and also his fantastic video editing skills, for Carsten for his gospel reading, and to John for his prayers. A 
blessing as we end our service, the collect for the 21st Sunday after Trinity. Grant we beseech thee, merciful Lord, to thy faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve thee with a quiet mind, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we come to our final hymn. Please do join in at home. And that hymn is, O God, you search me and you know me.